first question we have is, um, how are these loans different than the $30 bank overdraft fees um, and taking the largest check first or collateralized credit cards or installment loans? Bank fees are too high and poor people, uh, low income people, uh, <coughs> suffer greatly by them. There's also a lot of low income people who don't have bank accounts. So the difference, they're, they're two separate issues, both of them impacting low income people. We're focused on one of those issues right now, but we also strongly advocate that banks do better at uh, the kind of high interest rate fees, or the high, the high fees that they put on, on overdrafts. If I am 21 and Amendment U um, both become law, which interest rate becomes law? 18%, it's a fake interest rate. There's this constitutional amendment, and right in their language, they wrote words that null and void our 36% rate cap. So if both pass, the only one that matters is 18%, which is a fake rate cap. If a person goes into a payday loan under that new constitutional amendment, if they want a loan at that point, the lender, the payday lender, will force them to sign a waiver, waiving their right to an 18% loan, and simply charge them the 574%, 600%, whatever it is. Uh, basically, if Constitutional Amendment U passes, no matter what, interest rates on payday loans, car title loans, and installment loans will continue to be unlimited in the state. There will be no cap. 18% is not a cap, it's a fake cap, so do not vote for their constitutional amendment that is paid for by the payday lenders. How is the 36% determined? 36% is uh, a determination um, by our federal government. Uh, many years ago, the Pentagon uh, went to Congress and said, we have a readiness issue. They indicated that the payday lenders and the car title loan companies had preyed on military uh, personnel and their families, uh, parking right outside of bases all over the country. And they were putting military personnel and their families in such incredibly deep debt that it was becoming a readiness issue for our country uh, that military personnel couldn't even afford to, to, to leave the country to fight for our, for our nation. And so through a long study, uh, Within the, within the federal government, Congress passed a 36% rate cap that prohibits payday lenders from charging more than that to military members and their families. And that is why we went to a 36% rate cap. Opponents say payday loans offer support and help to those who are in serious financial need, and if there are limited loans uh, may not be available to them. What other safeguards do people have um, if those um, payday loans go away? If a person is desperately in need of a $500 loan, a $1,000 loan, a $5,000 loan, if they are desperate and they can't get a conventional loan through a bank at a low percentage rate interest, they shouldn't be borrowing money at 574%. I think that's pretty simple math. I'm a business owner, and I've had a lot of employees who have come to work at my shop having gone to payday loan companies or car title loan companies in the past. I help them pay it off immediately when I find out that they've done that. I charge them 0% interest, and we simply work it out on their payday. And I do it over the course of time, so it's not $500 or $1,000 coming out of their paycheck immediately. It's $100 here, $100 there. Business owners need to step up to the plate. Families need to step up to the plate. Churches already do it. Churches all over this state have paid off payday loans for members of their congregations. The one thing that people should understand is that taxpayers are doing a lot of the pain. Minnehaha County alone, spends $800,000 a year in rental assistance, in large part because people can't pay their rent because they're paying their payday loans. So 
companies in Georgia and Vegas and California are getting the money before local landlords are getting their money. And that's just wrong. Will initiated measure 21 address the payday loan system outright? Boy, I hope so. I really do. I'm sorry. These are bad companies. They're out-of-state companies. And I want them out of my state. And I think everybody should want them out of their state. They're simply bad operators who screw poor people left and right. They have made people's lives hell. And it's time for us to do better. We are so much better than these kind of people. You know, it's funny. They can't show up in public. They don't ever return a reporter's phone call. They are chicken to stand in front of the public and explain what their business really does. They're not here tonight. You'll never see them. The man who's funding this is from Atlanta, Georgia. He's a billionaire. He owns more car title companies than anybody in the world. A thousand in America. Okay? He sabotaged my restaurant. He tried to hurt my people. He's a bad man. He's put $2.7 million into this election already. We've put $40,000. Okay? All South Dakota money. All of his money is his billions that he's making from the payday loans that he puts out on poor people. The guy who's supposed to be here tonight, who was invited to be here tonight, has gotten $664,000 from this guy. Not bad. What origination fee do you allow, and what does the combination of origination fee and 36% make the APR on a $100 a week loan? Uh, don't ask me to do math in public. Um, <laughs> I'm assuming you know what that means. I, I, I don't quite. The proposed law that we have limits the entire thing to 36%. Okay, So if they want to put a, an origination fee in there along with an interest rate, it can't be more than 36% in total. It's the best way to say it. Would this only be for lending in South Dakota? What, what about those who are based in other states doing business here in South Dakota? If the loan is originating in South Dakota, it would be limited to 36%. Um, this question is about, the, um, is there a connection between video lottery and the payday lending industry? Um, did, did the payday lending industry begin to thrive in South Dakota when video lottery started? Absolutely. My co-chair of this committee, Steve Hickey, um, uses a phrase, uh, the poverty industry, and it's prevalent in South Dakota. You know, you drive down 12th Street, 10th Street, Minnesota Avenue, even 41st Street, um, they're everywhere. They're payday lenders, they're car title companies, they're pawn shops that, by the way, do the same kind of business that the payday lenders do. That's why Chuck Brennan's in the business, okay? It's not because he wants a, a big entertainment venue, it's because he wants to do the pawn business, which would remain legal under if this law were to pass. And then video lottery. Go into any video lottery shop anywhere in the country anywhere in the state, and what you'll see is low-income people playing the slots, hoping they win. And it's really sad. $128 million gets sucked out of the pockets of low-income families in South Dakota every year. So that taxes can stay low for the rest of us. It's pretty sick, right? It should be next, 2018. That's the next ballot initiative that we should put forth. If we want to improve the families, the lives of, of the low-income families in the state, you get rid of payday lending, you get rid of car title companies, you get rid of pawn shops, and you get rid of uh, uh, video lottery. Then it's a fair game. My family, we grew up very poor. My dad died when, when seven of our nine kids were still at home. Mom had the opportunity to still get us ahead because she didn't have all the creditors praying down her back, trying to make her make bad decisions. That's what we need in South Dakota, again, is a fair a fair hand for, for low-income families to actually get ahead in the state. 
What about unlicensed lending companies? Would they still be able to charge higher rates? I, I don't fully know what that means, to be honest with you. <clears throat> I'll say one thing. In South Dakota, the looseness of our state government is that anybody can set up as a payday lender. There's really no rules. It's the wild, wild west. There's no disclosure. Okay? If I wanted to get the ownership of a particular company that's lending money to the taxpayers of South Dakota, I can't get that. You can't get that. The Argus leader went to court to try and get it. They couldn't get it. There's no disclosure. There's barely a licensing fee. And it's the wild, wild west. So we can regulate your haircut. We can regulate, you know, massage therapy, but we don't regulate people who charge 600% interest on a loan. It just seems a little out of character. We are better than this in South Dakota. Okay, one last question. Um, and I might actually, might actually go to closing. I'm going to save that for our next We've got two last questions. I'm afraid we're going to run out of questions for the next question. So we'll go to closing comments if you would mind. We'll go, we've got one minute for closing remarks. You can see I'm very passionate about this. My family was very poor. All of us had an opportunity to move ahead. It wasn't through government handouts. It was through hard work and opportunity. I know a whole lot of low-income families in the state who work their tails off. One job, two job, three jobs. And they're not getting ahead. Because wages are too low and the predators are everywhere. Promising the world. And when you get desperate, your car breaks down and you live four miles from work and you need a $500 car repair, and no one's there to help you except that pretty friendly, you know, happy to wait on you person at the payday lending who's going to promise you the world and let you walk out with that $500 to get your car fixed. You're going to soon owe them $2,500. And you're only going to make your life worse. My family had the opportunity to get ahead, and I want every family in the South, in, in state to have the opportunity to get ahead too. Time's up.